Hey guys, Anthony for before days of window Prada Hospital and we've got the Hilux in here again. Now I'm not sure what I've put in videos and you know we're talking about our Hilux doing a bit of work showing you the first things we check and change and maintain and that sort of thing. And I'm gonna be quite honest with you. Yes, you know we changed the injectors, we did the EJR clean, clean the manifold, we did the BFE, we did the drive shaft, we did the wheel bearing. It's all beautiful. The suspension's really rough, it's a really rough ride. You may have noticed that in one of the videos, it's so rough compared to the Prados. But anyway, long story short, I don't know if I mentioned in one of the videos, it's this engine is quite rattly. It's definitely quite rattly, injector combustion side of things. Um, and I've explained in other videos, you've basically got an engine. We didn't check the compressions on it for reasons we've explained why we don't bother with that anymore with other video in other videos. Um, it ran fine. Look, it was noisy before. It shouldn't have been noisy before, and it was noisy before. And I've just gone, oh, since it's so noisy, I'll throw injectors at it. Because I wasn't going to. I was going to push this out, like really push the injectors out and show your readings and let you know what happens if you don't change them when you should. But it was already rightly, and it just seemed too rightly. It didn't seem like any other Prado or Hilux I've ever driven. It was really noisy. Um, even once it was warm, of course. Uh, so I went, we'll throw it. That's why I decided to put injectors at it, yeah? Um, the, uh, the thing is, it's... I don't know if it's any quieter, it's still the same or a little bit better. It's certainly quite noisy now. We're trying to work out what's going on. There's not a lot of factors here that, you know, the injectors are everything. You've got the engine, you've got compressions, you've got the injectors, and then you've got fuel pressure. So, yep, you guessed it. I'm not going to waste time. I've been listening to it. I've been thinking about it. I've been thinking what could be causing this, and without wasting too much time on it, because you know it's eight years old i'm going to throw a suction control valve at it and no it hasn't got the short one it's got the long one already there's been a few people that have done this and there's been a few people that have sort of solved a few issues like there has been a couple of people changing a MAF sensor for a couple of symptoms and it's sorted out even though it tests fine you can clean it, it works fine you change it it solves a problem so i just want to show you down here where it's at right it's down there in the middle of the pitch you can see that fuel pipe crosses straight across the middle of it. It's sort of just down right at the end of my finger, right there, right? It's in the background there, I'll zoom in. That's the suction control valve, right? So basically what we've got to do, we are going to, I'm not gonna be able to video this whole thing here, but we're gonna remove this fuel filter out of the way. We're just gonna slip it out of the bracket. We'll undo the two plugs, slip it out of the bracket, move it over this way, out this way a bit, so we can get our arm down through this area here. Undo the gray plug that's on the back of it. Take the two five mil, uh, well, actually, we're not even going to take the fuel hose off for this one. Usually, we take this top fuel hose off to get it out of the way. I might not even do it on this one. We may or may not. You can do that if you like, but we might just uh, swing the clamp of that fuel hose, that one there, around so we don't cut our hand on it, but we might just leave it there. This one hasn't got the adapter kit. I'll give you some more information throughout the video while we're changing it. And, yeah, we're going to do a... This is called a guess Gnostic or a swap Gnostic because it's going to take literally... For this one without the adapter, a five minute change. And if it doesn't fix it, well, I'll be happy that it's got a new suction control valve anyway, because it is a wear and tear item. And that'll also provide R&D on uh, any other improvements because fuel economy also, it's using 11 liters per 100 Ks. That's see a 120 over there, the 120 there, the 120 gets 11 liters per 100 Ks. It's big and heavy, modified, it's got all-terrain tires. It's got a lot more weight than this little Hilux with an alloy tray. With um, these Cooper tires, they're a lot more road oriented in my opinion. So I just think it should be getting 10s or better for the same sort of running around. So anyway, we're gonna get in there. Let's, this video's, I'm letting you know where it's at. We're, with the, we have got some rattles there. Look, it could be just me being too fussy because I'm used to Prados, not Hiluxes or it could be an issue, but we're gonna to go to town on it and replace things. So then we can categorically come out and say, mate, we've replaced everything on this thing, and that's how it is. Even to the point, we may even throw another set of injectors into it, and um, someone will get these ones at a bargain price, even though they're brand new and they've only done a couple thousand Ks. Um, or we might even throw an old set of injectors into it and see what happens. But let's get this suction control well done and see if that makes any difference. Having a discussion here, all right. I've got my assistant onto the job. 
Mate, if I let him work on anyone else's car, I'm gonna let him work on my car. No issue there. It's mainly so we can do the video, but we do do things a little bit differently, you know? Maybe I can learn from him. He can learn from me. But he said he doesn't even normally move that out of the way. And I said, can you just move it out of the way, please, mate? See how long did that take? I videoed. He wasn't even ready. I said, I don't care. I'm rolling. And literally 25 seconds of video, and that's gone from being in the way to out of the way and opens it up like that. Can we just please do it that way? We can do whatever you want, right? But um, on my car, you do it this way. Anyway, the, the top fuel hose we talk about removing, that's that one down there, right? I'm going to sort of get around this side a bit. He doesn't remove that either. Can we at least spin the clamp around so you don't scratch your back of your hand on it and cut your, slice your back of your finger open? Can we do that? Because you do those with your finger, mate, really easy. There you go, stuff here, mate. I'm not talking, I'm not doing anything, I'm doing it my way. <laughs> Plugs off, happy days, right? I'm gonna get in there and have a look while he goes to get the, look at that. So you got the access there, the plugs there. See the hose above it? I just take that off, but you don't have to. You certainly don't have to, but see how the bottom of the clamps, they're just sticking down this way. When you're trying to get the Allen key in there, it's likely to sort of, I'm getting out of your way, sorry. So we're, we're live here, we're live and happening. This is an action. Now, when you change the suction control valve, you know we've got the other videos on that. When you upgrade from the the shorter one to the longer one, there's an adapter kit sort of thing comes with it, whatever, depending. Uh, every VIN number's got different suction control valves. You know, some suppliers just say, hey, one suits all, just throw it in there. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. There's a bit of luck there. There was a story, I don't know if it was a rumor, but um, who was it? Um, someone supplied someone a suction control valve and then the engine blew up. Now, I don't know how that would happen, but I suppose if it was the wrong one and it didn't work right and fuel pressure, fuel pressure was wrong and it went a bit crazy, then perhaps something like that could happen. But that's all the details I had. I can't remember. It was years ago. Somebody was telling me the story. And, you know, stories, everybody's got one. So. But I just reckon use the right one. We supply the right one based on um, VIN number. Sometimes we give you a different one. Um, if, as I said, with a lot of components on the Protos and Hiluxes, if we find that there's different part numbers or components from one vehicle to the other, we'll give you the better one, if you know what I mean, the better one of the two, as long as it's you know interchangeable. If we go, well, if Thailand's using that and we see problems with that, we don't like it, but Japan's using that on the Protos and they're the same, it's just a different number, we're gonna give you the better one. It may cost more, but you know, poor man pays twice, do it right the first time. So as I said, these are really easy. There's no spacer you gotta put there. You have to muck around with O-rings and gaskets and holding it all in the right spot. When I say easy, my man here, he has done heaps of these, right? Now, he's always nervous on camera. That's why he looks a bit dodgy on the camera and that, right? <laughs> no, not really, kind of, maybe sort of, I don't know. You gotta work out if that's true or not. Like me, see, I'm, I'm nervous on camera. I'm not even, I don't even want to put my hands on there, yeah. I don't even want to put my hands anymore, I'm videoing your hands. What are you doing down there, mate? What, what's going on, mate? You got it out yet or what? The second that's always the hardest. second one's the hardest, yeah. They are nice and it. tight. What's the other? Uh, Alright, here's a test, mate. What's the, what's the torque setting you use, mate? What's the torque specification? Shrugging shoulders, mate. It's not good enough here. We're on, I've got a video going on YouTube here, mate. No, I'm the same, mate. I've never used torques because, A, way too hard to get down there with a torque wrench. You could probably do it. And you know what? Again, the experience. We know what you know. what's too tight, what's too loose. You know, not tight enough that you're going to wreck it, but not loose that it's going to fall out. They were pretty tight. I'd take a guess at, they feel like they're about at least 20 newton metres, yeah? But they probably stick over time. So around about the 20 would be my guess. It's going into, if I remember correctly, is it screwing into alloy? I think it's screwing into cast iron, actually, to steel, not um, not alloy, if I remember correctly. So the second bolt's coming out now. And then, once that's out of the way, it'll be a bit of a jiggle and a wiggle and a, a jiggle, wiggle and a pull. I'm just gonna come over and get in your way a little bit. Right, let's see what's going on. That's the awkward one that's a little bit behind, down the bottom behind it. Take note of the configuration, what it looks like. Some people have asked, Oh, I've got around this way. Is that some people have put in 180 degrees around the other way. To be honest, it, I don't think it matters. I don't know, actually. I haven't thought about that too hard, but I don't think it matters. And if someone's got it in there that 180 degrees around the other way and it works, then obviously it works fine. But maybe that was the one that the engine blew up. Maybe it wasn't the wrong valve. It was someone put it in wrong. So 
It's always best to just put it back the way it was. That's how we like to do it. Toyota engineering, they've got all these marks. Like on this hose right here, see? The white mark, it's telling you, that's where the clamp goes, right? See around here? Clamp, there's a mark there. It's where, the, it's where it goes, mate. So just put it where it goes. Unless they do something silly and it's in the way and you go, hang on, I'm going to move it around there so it's out of the way. Like that fuel clamp down there right in the middle of the picture, mate. So you watch this. Hands, mate. It's getting a bit... Trying to stay away from that clamp. So I will just spun it around so it point upwards. And then, right, so the SCV's coming out now. Right, there it is. Part of Bing. Let's have a look at it on the right, bench. Here we are on the bench. You can see this is the old one and this is the new one. Looking pretty well identical. Um, bit of an upgrade, maybe. Because the one I've got here, I believe this one could be made in Thailand. And this one here... I believe this one here on the right is definitely made in Japan. So yeah, there they are. They should look pretty well identical like that. You can see the O-rings still sitting on this one as it came out. We haven't touched anything else. So these O-rings, they generally stay really good and you could reuse it. And we use a bit of molly coat to hold it in place sometimes. You can see there's no gasket there. Let's just go to the back of the pump on the car and have a look in there. So the maximum information video thing again. And uh, we'll have a look, see what happens. Okay, lights, camera, action. We've got the torch on. I'm going to try and get down there. Could be a bit hard with that fuel hose in the way, but it's all good, mate. We'll just have a bit of fun here. I'm going to manoeuvre, do that manoeuvre. I'm going to get you sideways and everything. I'm going to go down there and go, yep, that's what you're looking at, right? Right, that's what you're looking at. So that's that. You know, you know what you're looking at, the configurator, there it is around there, showing you max information, keep it clean, we don't want any dust or dirt or anything, don't do it out on a dusty, windy, dirty day, things need to be clean, that's why we'll stop rolling, get this other valve, bang, and butter bing, and just get it in there. So we've got a new O-ring, obviously this one, it's sort of sitting in position by a bit of luck, we're going to leave that as it is, there's a new O-ring that comes with it, that goes on there, you just need to use something like the Molly Coat, which you should already have a tube up if you've purchased injector kit from us and you got the whole kit or you took it to one of our recommended repairers they'll take care of the installation and just can you just show me how you molly coat it bring it over here mate oh yeah yeah there we go right see and that just makes it sticky enough that we can sit it in place over the top of this scv and just centralize it so it's central like that one and then once it's sitting there we'll be able to gently lower that down to the vehicle without bumping the o-ring and as long as it doesn't move and it shouldn't this works really well gently you can use these guide pins we probably will put the guide pins in what do you reckon yeah we'll yeah, do the guide the, pins for the video for the we'll put these two pins in where the bolts go well i even use one guide pin sometimes so i put one guide pin in top and bottom i normally put the guide pin up the top because the guide pin's harder to get out at the bottom yeah. so i put yes yeah, so you're the same yeah independent but same yeah i like it right that's how we like our 4 before diesel workshop partners you know we didn't plan it we're the same it's just because we're good we're the same good if you know what i mean good bad and yeah, whatever um but we're the same and it just turns out when you do things well it turns out you're doing it the same i find that a lot with our workshop partners so guide pin goes in the top slip the suction control valve in <clears throat> as I explained in the other video, then you hold the valve in with one hand and you've got your bolt already ready on your tool to go in the bottom and you screw it in. You don't let go of it either till it's all the way in. As soon as it's all the way in, you can let it go. This might move out a little bit, but it's not going to go anywhere. The O-ring's sitting on the taper in the back of the pump. Um, then the guide pin can come out and you put your other bolt in and you sort of go back and forth. You don't tighten up one to 50 newton meters. You go from one to the other one to the other. Yeah, but it's all the way in and then just give it a nice little nip whether it's the 20 or 20 or 25 or whatever it is we go by feel so you want to look it up the torque specification or if you know what it is look it up and put it in the comments remember guys just because it's in the comments doesn't mean it's right but if it's there hopefully if it sounds about right it could be right maybe put your source as well if you know what it is please put your source of information All right back to the car let's get it in there there we are i've just centralized that o-ring as best it might look untidy because of the molly coat but look test Did it move? I go like that. I'm, I'm flicking it. I'm flicking. I'm trying to get it to move. I don't believe it moved. We're not going to adjust it again. We're going to take it to the vehicle, see if it goes in. So there it is. We've got the little Allen key piece of the quarter drive with the screw ready to go on the sill there. I'm going to get down here out the way with the camera. When you're ready, uh, mate. 
So as long as you get it down there without knocking it on anything, that O-ring shouldn't go anywhere. Try and get it in once right the first time, if you know what I mean. I'm talking to people in the video, not you, of course. You know what you're doing. Um, like I say, the getting that fuel hose out of the way is optional, but I, I get it out of the way usually. But it was this one I actually said, maybe we don't need to do it on this one. And he said, ah, oh, I don't do that anyway. So, you know, each to your own when it comes to that. Sometimes one little extra job makes it a job easier. It's only going to take a minute. But of course you've got further risk of contamination. So, so you get it in with one hand, you got to try and hold it there or you might even be able to let it go. There you go, that's how you do it. You let it go, it stay there anyway. Might be a little bit more fiddly when you've got the spacer on there. At this point in time, I'll let you know there's two different lengths in screws. There's short and long. You, If you've got the long suction control valve, you use the short screws. If you've got the short suction control valve, it probably has the short screws. If you're putting the long suction control valve adapter, that's when you need the long screws. So it should all make sense. There's a big O-ring and a little O-ring. You should be able to work out which one's which. Sometimes there's a couple extra O-rings, you know, whichever, you can't go, just pick the right size. You can't go wrong. I've never had anyone, ourselves, workshop partners or DIYs, anyone go wrong with that. Well, not that they've told me anyway. Um, yeah, get that bottom bolt in all the way. Basically the O-ring, it goes in, it sits on the taper on the back of the pump. It's amazing that there's no gasket and there's only one O-ring and it just, and it actually really seals. But again, we're not the engineers. We just do it the way it's meant to be done. And I just think it's amazing that, uh, you know, it goes in place and sits that way. Anyway, guys, what we're gonna do, we're gonna finish this. We're gonna run this vehicle for a bit longer, whether it's a week or two or a month or a thousand Ks or a few hundred Ks to go, oh mate, you know, and if that made a massive difference and it solved the problem, I'll come back and tell you that in a video. If not, the next thing we do, I'll let you know in a video. Sub subscribe, turn the bell on so you don't miss the update. Um, all the information, well, except for the ones I forget, are in a playlist called Our, I think it's called Our 2013 Hilux or something like that, or Our Hilux, something like that anyway. Just trying to show you some videos from a different perspective and, you know, what we do on our own vehicles as prevention, that sort of thing. And there's still work to be done here, but, uh, we don't always get around to it. So you're getting the bottom bolt in still, and then you're gonna take the guide pin out the top and put the top bolt in. While you're doing that, we're just gonna have a bit of a look around here on the vehicle. We'll go across here. We did the BFE, so just quickly check the coolant level. Because there's important information in this SCV video in regards to the BFE and coolant changes, which is why you watch all the videos to the end, because you never know what might be mixed in there. Now I've seen this, I've just noticed this bit of tape hanging here on the belt, not a big deal, but we're going, I'm going to cut that off as soon as I uh, stop rolling the camera here. But I want to let you know, and this is, I suppose, for all the clients or anyone that comes into the workshop, um, we did the BFE on this one, as we do on many others. And the way I like to bleed the cooling systems in the videos, but getting that last bit of air out of the system can take time sometimes. Uh, <laughs> take time sometimes. Anyway. You can think you've got it all right, but you really need to drive the vehicle and let it a few heating cooling cycles, warm up cycles if you like, if you want to call it that. Um, they need to be done. And what we try and do, once we've bled it, we drive the vehicle and then uh, we'll let it cool down because it'll contract again. Then we'll top it up again. We need to drive the vehicle. And there's, we can't spend hours driving and checking and topping up. And it's the only way to get all the air out. So. We, this is why, you know, time is money, jobs cost money, a coolant change, it's probably too cheap and this is a wake up call for me that I'm going to put the price up a bit on the coolant change or BFE jobs because of the time it takes. Now, the other thing you can do is we fill it up obviously with genuine coolant. Um, there's two options we've got. I ask everybody to check their coolant level. So every warm up cycle, so you're going to take your vehicle back, you're going to drive home, it'll be fine. There's not going to be an issue with this. But there's nothing you can do. I'm trying to be transparent and let you know there's nothing you can do. Nine times out of ten, the coolant level will be fine. And sometimes we overfill it a little bit to compensate with what we've learnt from our knowledge, how much it's going to go down and how much you'll need, and hopefully that works out right. Sometimes it ends up overfull, which is fine. It's just going to push the excess out. It may make a little bit of mess, which means you just need to give it a, a wash. You know, it'll come out this hole up here, perhaps, right? And make a bit of mess around the place. So the next day when it's cold in the morning, you pop the bonnet and you go, yeah, level's good, I don't need to do anything. If there's a bit of mess up here, you clean it up, pour some water over it, 
no problem. Not the whole engine bay, just where the mess is, yeah? You get your garden hose, give it a quick spray. Keep it clean so you know there's no leaks. If it ends up down below the full line, I would like to top it up. So whether it's me, whether you want to come back, whether you want to have your own coolant available, if it's just a small amount, a little bit of water will be fine. Just make sure it's good, clean water. A little bit of water, a little bit of water won't hurt things. It's not going to be a big deal here, but I just want to let you know because on this one, again, this is why we need to own and have these vehicles here and use these vehicles and work on these vehicles, not just yours because like this engine being rattlier than any others that I've worked on that I can think of after having all the work done on new injectors. It's absolutely awesome for us because we get to play with it and we get it forces us, it forces more learning upon us. So, um, and I want to be able to say if, if it's how it is and we've done everything on this vehicle and it's how it is and we've put five sets of injectors in it and five suction control valves and five MAP sensors and five air filters and five MAP filters and whatever and the bloody thing is still the same, then that's how it is. And I want to be able to say that to you if, if that's how it is sometimes. And it is like that sometimes, but this is worse than all the others. So we're going to go a bit further. If I had a customer's car that was this noisy, I'd probably go, well, you know, this, this they can do this, but this one, maybe we should throw our suction control, maybe this, maybe that. We've looked at the fuel pressure. So there's diagnostic time, and there's but how much time do you spend? And there's sometimes there's things, especially with fuel pressure, suction control valve type stuff, you just can't diagnose. So back onto the coolant. This one, I popped the bonnet the next day. Wow, it was down, you know what I mean? I topped it up again. It happened a few times over about a week, and I'm like... I reckon it took, it might sound like a lot or not, you know, I don't know if it was half a litre to a litre, not a lot of coolant. You're not going to cook the engine in like that, but I want to keep the level up. Now, the good news is after about a week of topping it up, whether it was 50 mil here, 100 mil there, 300 mil one day, whatever, it sat perfectly. And I do remember overfilling it. Right now, what are we? It's pretty well cooled down. It hasn't been driven for hours, has it? It's warm, okay? So I'm going to take a guess at coolant temp. 40 degrees so when it cools down it's still going to be around that full line maybe somewhere between the seam I like it around the seam anyway that's where I like to have it a finished thing there's plenty of room for when it expands it's not going to blow out anyway back to over here let's see what's going on here mate what are you doing mate is this done yet or what done. is this job done done what, what are you doing mate oh you it's put the fuel filter what about this mate what about this what is this man? Yeah. <laughs> hadn't got to it yet, I know, I know. He's waving his arms around going, man, if you let me finish. Anyway, we're just mucking around, it's all good, let's have a look. Yeah, it's down there, it's plugged in, it's sealed up. Okay, mate, do you want to do the final test and start the engine? And we'll see if the engine starts, and if you did something dodgy, uh, you know, it won't start. Let's check it out, mate. Let's see what happens. Could be a big backfire and a big cloud of smoke, mate. All right, guys, that's a video, and uh, hopefully you've learned something there, a bit more about the suction control valve. There's information there. It's all combined in one video. There's installation information. There's why you may or may not change it. If you want to throw a suction control valve into yours that's already got a long one, that's something that's worth doing. I suggest you shoot me a text message. appreciate all the questions on the YouTube, but I can't always answer them all, that's for sure. Um, if you've got a serious problem and you're local to me, you're one of our clients, that you're trying to rectify you can send me a text message perhaps i'll recommend yeah let's throw a suction control valve at it something that can be done uh, but look stay tuned subscribe because i'll let you know whether this has made any difference or if it was a complete wasted money okay aka tax deduction anyway guys thanks for watching please subscribe turn the bell on uh hit the like button if you learnt maybe something about suction controls installing them when to replace them or not let's just quickly say you know the fuel pump basically is a constant pump the valve is what controls the pressure so if it's not working right your fuel pressure is or it can be all over the place so anyway guys that's the video we're out of here subscribe bell on like button butter bing butter boom hopefully not butter boom we're out of here see you bye